Hi, this is Broondog. Today we're going to take a look at the ESP32 Unishield, what it is, what it does, and how you use it in your brewery controller. Now one of the questions we often get is, what is a Unishield and why do you make it? Well, as you know, one of the great things about brew control is it leverages off-the-shelf, readily accessible and available, non-proprietary interface microcontrollers as the physical interface. And while these, th these are absolutely great in terms of form, function, and cost, they do not provide the connectivity needed sometimes to drive high voltage or high current DC devices. Those include valves, pumps, solenoids, relays, and the like. So the Unishield acts like a standard screw shield in that it gives you connectivity for wiring to the interface, but it also provides high current driver outputs to drive those DC devices directly. In terms of specifications, the ESP32 Unishield is about four inches long, about three inches wide, and about an inch and a half high. It's a dual board stack design, and it's mounted in this DIN rail carrier, so that gives the system installer the ability to mount on DIN rail or on a DIN rail clip, and that provides an opportunity to very easily remove this controller if needed. Now in terms of I.O., the ESP32 Unishield has 24 I.O., 20 of which can be high current outputs. Now those high current outputs are phased depending on how they're used. Typically you get a maximum of 3 amps per pin, 6 amps per driver, and 15 amps per bank. And we'll go through what those are in a moment. So as I mentioned, this Unishield is a dual board stack design. The bottom board is called the base board, and the top one is called the riser board. The base board contains all of the I.O. connectivity and I.O. power, where the riser board contains the interface microcontroller, a DC to DC power supply, and then connectivity for the interface power. Now talking about the base board, it's broken up into two banks. This is the A bank along the bottom edge, and the B bank along the top edge. The A bank is fed by this terminal, VA, and likewise VB for the top set of terminals. These I.O. terminals are numerated, so this is terminal 1, 2, and 3, 4, 5, and 6. And each of these terminals are eight pairs of I.O. So there's 4 I.O., 4 I.O., 4 I.O. listed here. And what's cool about the dual bank design is you can power these terminals with two different voltages if you want. For example, this lower edge can be driven by 24 volts and the top edge by 12 volts if, for example, you have a mixed voltage design in your brewery controller. Looking a little more closely at the pins, what we have are pairs of I.O. So for each terminal pair, we have what's called a direct pin and a driver pin. So a direct pin connects directly, as the name implies, back to the interface microcontroller. This is like any normal screw shield. The driver pin takes that same output and puts it through a high current driver in order to provide the power to drive the devices we mentioned earlier directly. And those work in pairs all the way across. One of the things we also did with this design was connected the VA terminal to the riser board power through a jumper on the baseboard. So if you're running, for example, 12 volts on your devices, you can use that very same power to drive the interface power and not have to run an extra wiring line. Now looking at the riser board, as mentioned earlier, this has a DC to DC power supply on it, and that allows you to provide a higher voltage than you normally might to the interface microcontroller and have this DC to DC power supply create the appropriate voltage and keep it clean so that you don't have to have an additional power supply in your control enclosure. When setting this up, you would provide power through the power terminals or through the VA terminal bank, as I mentioned earlier. And then the DC to DC power supply voltage is set with this potentiometer. That voltage can be directed in a number of ways for using this, this power switch. So first, if you set the DC to DC power supply to five volts, and put the switch in this position, it will feed that five volts to the interface microcontroller. We also have the option for 3.3 .3 volts, 
to feed to the interface microcontroller, or a central position called VR just breaks out this power into this terminal. So you can use this DC to DC power supply to drive other devices in your control box and then power the interface with a separate five volt power supply as you see fit. Finally, along the top edge of the riser board are terminals for serial connections. So we provide both I2C and SPI bus breakouts. So for example, if you're wiring to an RTD amplifier, you would do that through the connections made right here. And finally, we've included pull-up resistors for one wire and I2C right on the board. So if you're connecting, for example, a one wire temperature probe, you can do that without an external resistor and use the switch to, to create the pull-up. This Unishield comes with an ESP32 development module installed, but should you need to remove and replace it, it can be taken off the riser board because it's mounted in a set of headers. This particular ESP32 is the external antenna model, so that allows this Unishield to be installed in a metal enclosure and still maintain good Wi-Fi connectivity. So that's a look at the ESP32 Unishield. Please reach out to us at info at brewcontrol.com if you have any questions or concerns. Have a great day.